Hello, YouTubers. Joe Kersey here on uh, March 20th, 2016, uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, and it's about, uh, it's, it's almost 1300 Eastern Time, Eastern Daylight Time. Um, I got back from church here about uh, an hour, hour and 15 minutes ago. But uh, basically, I want to tell you a funeral story and a Palm Sunday story today. And uh, I'm, I'm a bit obsessive about some of this stuff, so you'll just have to sort of bear with me because that's just part of who I am. Uh, yesterday, we had the funeral of uh, this saint on earth, Luella Hunter. Uh, yeah, you know, just a magnificent woman. I mean, just you know, use any any adjective that's appropriate to Christian behavior. She demonstrated it: compassion, generosity, love, care, reconciliation, uh, the whole bit. You know, helping the less fortunate. You know, spreading joy, and you know she she did that her entire life basically. Uh, but she died. You know, I, I mentioned she died here. Uh, gosh, back in uh, I want to say December, and uh, had the funeral. Now it turned out her husband. As I mentioned her husband, uh, well, her the widow, or you know her. Uh, the, you know, the two days before the funeral, I had to go to the hospital, and he was not at the funeral. Although they videotaped it, or they where they videoed it, uh, not videotaped it, they did it on you know. Uh, and so he'll he'll be able to see it. And actually, uh, the plan is to actually have a uh, uh, sort of a ceremony that's just sort of peculiar to. The church, although anybody who wants to come can come, obviously. But you know, when when he can actually be, be there, because uh, not all of her ashes went down into the common hole. Uh, there were little portions given to her, each of her four children, and uh, then a, a somewhat larger portion set aside uh, for Ed uh, to to do something with whatever he wishes to do with, you know, however he's going to manage that. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, word is that Ed's getting slightly better, but he's not out of the woods, and they haven't figured out where the source of sepsis is yet, so. Uh, anyway, uh, funeral was it was a you know it was a big funeral, uh, probably uh, somewhere between a hundred, five hundred and twenty people there. Uh, I'm basing that basing that on sort of the seating des density when you look out over the crowd in a church that seats two hundred two hundred five in the nave. Not counting the choir choir loft and. Uh, Uh, you know, it, for the most part, it went. For the most part, it went well. Um, Henry Shaw and I read. My judge buddy and I read, uh, and uh, there, you know, it was like I will say. Normally, normally, Reverend Highland keeps us all. You know, he, he gives you. a informs you what you're supposed to do. And for the most part, he did. But uh, over the course of the service, things started going somewhat awry. You know, you know, for example, there was supposed to be an opening hymn. I mean, you know, the, you know, they go up doing the I am the resurrection and the life stuff. And then then you sing the opening hymn, generally. Then sing the opening hymn. Okay, well, you know, I have been in services where sometimes the guy just sort of decides not 
not to do that. And that, okay. So then, uh, then we go into, the, do, you know, do the readings and then the sermon and, uh, uh, you know, I, there's another hymn in there that actually was probably, it was actually the listed hymn. <laughs> and then uh, comes time to start the, uh, you, know, you know, after the, the sermon and the remarks from the family, then, uh, uh, you know, you do uh, the offertory hymn, even though there's, they don't take a collection at the funeral. I, actually, I was at a, a funeral once where they did take a collection. <laughs> but they didn't do that today or yesterday. And uh, uh, that hymn was, uh, it was also the one that was listed. Okay, and then, and then but before, you know, then he, then, he, then he gives instructions to how to take communion you know, for people that, 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 you know, might not be used to taking communion, period, or, or in the Episcopal Church. He says, well, in the Episcopal Church, if you're baptized, you can take communion. If you're a baptized Christian, you take communion. But, and then he goes into how you do it, you know, and, 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 and then he says, you know, if you don't want to actually put the bread in your mouth, you know, I mean, or, or, and then drink the wine out of the goblet, he says, then you can, you know, he says, you can give the piece of bread to the chalice bearer and he'll dip it in and then he'll give you the bread back. And I, I leaned over to Henry and I said, you know, I said, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't going to happen. That's, you know, that ain't going to happen. He says, well, that's, that's how they, that's how they sometimes did it at St. John's because he's, he spent, he went down, he fled to St. John's in Worthington when we, he had a rector we didn't, he didn't like. He came back though, and uh, and I and, and I, I I said, yeah, well, just like my lawyer, Judge Whitney, has a sign in his office and in his courtroom, you know, yeah, it said, I don't care how they do it in Franklin County, you know, I thought, I don't care how they do it in Franklin County down at St. John's. <laughs> so turns out, first. First woman I go up there to give the wine to, she she starts trying to hand me the hand me this bread, and I said, I I, t I said, that was a mistake. He made a mistake. That's not how we do it. And after that, I was the only, I was the only person that tried to do that because you know, logistically, it's just very hard to ha handle this goblet, you know, and and. Because you know, you've got to keep holding it. You, you never let go of that goblet. You never let go of that goblet. You, you might let it swivel a bit on the stem, but you never let go. You never let go of it. The only time I fully release that goblet is to somebody else that is a, you know, a, wine, a wine bearer, if you will, you know, and knows how to handle the thing. Because, no, no, you know, you do not want to let this thing out of your hand. And then, so, okay, so that gets him. And then he he gets up, you know, at the end he says, well, the, the, hymn, the hymn listed on the hymn board is wrong. He says it's, it's hymn 620. Okay. Well, then you look in the program and it says hymn 620. And it was, now, interestingly enough, it was a different hymn, but it was, it was sung to the same tune, the same tune as the hymn we had as the offertory hymn. So two different hymns, same tune. And there's this sort of like this long pause. But he says, well, while we decide, we'll have the post-communion prayer. By this time, he was getting a little punchy. He was, he, this man was obviously very, very, very tired. I mean, you know, you know, he acted as if he had been up for about 48 or 50 hours straight. I mean, because he was, you know, he, he, start, he, started, to, he started to lose it 
about halfway through the Sursum Cordis there in the, in the Eucharistic prayer. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I was kind of feeling bad for it because you know, I'm, sure he, I'm sure he's been dead tired getting ready for this funeral and so forth. He gave a great, as he always does, he, gives a, he gave a great sermon. And he did it, you know, on his feet, not at the pulpit. Um, I, I've always liked that style of preaching anyway. Uh, from anyone. Uh, there aren't too many people who can pull it off very well. Generally, the ones that can do it, and the ones that can't stop doing it after they figure out they can't do it. So, so then, so then, Carol, our organist, leans over, you know, the rail, and she says, "The hymn is the same one that's listed in the bulletin and on the, but on the board, hymn six twenty." It's like. So, I will say, uh, if Luella uh, selected the details of this funeral, and I guess she did, uh, she, chose, she chose shitty music. <laughs> at least it wasn't, at least she didn't include that god-awful Eagle's Wings song. But the poor guy was tired. Now, he was considerably perkier today. Uh, he must have gotten some sleep. And, uh, but again, it was, uh, you know, in theory, you know, there were supposed to be various parts assigned for this, you know, this, this passion gospel, you know. I was the narrator, but, you know, and their pilot had been assigned. It was my judge buddy, you know, you know, how appropriate that he would be pilot, and uh, I. But I think you know. I think that was that was it. Yeah, you know, clearly somebody hadn't been selected to read Jesus. Yeah, I mean, you know, like the narrator and Jesus were the two big parts, and quite often, you know, you'll, they'll stand up at the lectern and read from the same book at the lectern. And then the smaller parts will be chiming in from the congregation. So, uh, leaving aside the fact that, that the readings listed in the actual bulletin were incorrect. A small matter of that. You know, you know, I mean, they had, they had citation, you know, biblical citations in the service bulletin that were not, not the readings that were in the, the thing that they actually put in the, you know, that you read from, or, or the congregation reads from. <clears throat> it, uh, it, uh, leaving that aside, um, the, uh, oh, hell. Oh, so, so I, I, I get up and, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I hold my, you know, I hold, I hold this up and walk over to the lectern, you know, and, uh, and I, you know, I've got, a, you know, I showed you, I had it all printed up. You know. Now, it turns out that, uh, the uh, fellow that uh, edited the uh, the actual insert hates hates pronouns. So I had I'd had to go through and change all the pronouns to proper names. Well, it does it does avoid ambiguity. And it doesn't read all that awkwardly most of the time. But it was a bit of a pain in the ass to, to discover that last night after I got home from this funeral. And you know, I had to 
pull out all this, you know, edit all this stuff I had printed up. Which, which I had printed up from the Episcopal Church website, by the way. I mean, the official site. <clears throat> which is actually, you know, word for word the same thing as the NRSV. So, got that done. Anyway, so I, uh, I, I read the first narrator passage, and then it's, then Jesus is supposed to chime in. You know, and, it's a, and Jesus said, and then you're sort of holding, you're sort of looking around, you're sort of scanning around. And, you know, you're, you're waiting a little bit to see if somebody jumps in, because you know, sometimes people won't jump right in. And it's like, Phew. so I read that Jesus line. So then read my next narrator line. And then there's another Jesus line, and I'm sort of just sort of about ready to open my mouth and do the. And then God bless Jim Hinton. He, he jumps in and he saves the day. He, he just starts reading the Jesus part. And, uh, you know, that, that made things go a lot, lot smoother. And then uh, when we got to the first. Uh, sort of smaller part like servant girl or assembly or, or no elders or you know scribes uh, uh, actually uh, there was a bit of a pause but then before I said anything Jason Ross jumped in and he sort of did a number of the bit parts the rest of the the, the, the time so uh, it you know it did work out I mean these two guys you know saved the day and and, and made everything you know. I I have I have read I mean it's clear that no other parts had been assigned just me and pilot uh, then uh, when Peter came in I had to read one Peter part and then uh, Brenda Vensky jumped in and did Peter uh, but I I have I have read before I have been narrated before where in which, you know, parts had been assigned. I mean, you know, the rector was passing out these things on cardboard with the, with the things highlighted in the various parts. And uh, that went a lot, a lot less smoothly than it went today. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Oh, I, uh, well, uh, two, two other gripes about... Uh, Luella's funeral. We didn't do the Apostles' Creed. And we didn't do the Lord's Prayer to committal. I have no idea why. When Charles didn't do the Apostles' Creed, he did that deliberately to not do it. I think, I think yesterday was just a man was too damn tired, so damn tired, he was getting punchy. Well, anyway, so the the Palm Sunday after you know it did go well, all things considered, and um, so um, I'm going. I know I'm going to read at the Easter Vigil next Saturday, I, and I know I'm reading at the eight o'clock service on uh, Easter Sunday. I may stay and just attend the ten thirty service, if nothing else, because I want to sing Earth and All Stars. This wonderful. Eight verse, somewhat ridiculous on the face of it, him. Uh, that has that's been a tradition in our church as long as I've been going there. So, uh, Carol insists on doing all eight verses. It drove Charles nuts. <laughs> Too bad. It's a great. Too, it's a lot of fun to sing, and she does it as the offertory hymn for. Uh, uh, you know, between the liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the table. Well, I came home to find that those dishes had been done. That sink full of dirty dishes had, uh, you know, Paul, Paul had been beavering away on those things for about two and a half hours in my absence. And, uh, so now we can start dirty, dirtying up some more. God bless him. Uh, 
Yeah, he, he finally did it. Finally, did some, and then uh, now he's now he's on a beer run. You know, I pray to God he gets back in time or gets back okay. Doesn't get picked up or hurt somebody. He's actually in pretty reasonable shape though so for him. Well, I'm gonna you know. May, might get this uploading here, and then uh, we'll be talking to the good, the good Tony and or Tonys uh, uh, here this afternoon on Sunday, and uh, so that's uh, no, yeah. It's been a very interesting couple of. You know, it's been a very. I'll tell you, it's been a very interesting forty-eight hours for me, and I'm not, I'm not nearly punchy yet. So, bye-bye, YouTubers.